perform an execution on your deadlift, on your squat, on your strict press, and on a clean. We're going to spend roughly 12 to 15 minutes on each. Your setup on each one of those is going to be really important to your execution of the movement. So those of you who were in class yesterday and you were here for the deadlift review, great. If you weren't here, this is only going to benefit you more. Now, when you go into your deadlift, there's three things you need to do before you even address the bar and pick it up. Number one is your stance. Your stance should be between hip width and shoulder width apart. If you are doing a conventional deadlift, if you deadlift with a sumo style, that is completely different. But for the purpose of what we're doing today, we are talking strictly of conventional deadlift. Feet are between hip and shoulder width apart. When your feet are too wide, you're going to become less powerful because your hands are going to get in the way. Or you have to go with a wider grip. The wider your grip is, the more you have to stand up to achieve that extension in the hips for a good lockout. So number one is getting your foot position. So I want all of you to get your foot position on the bar. It should be centered. Your heels will stay down the entire time on the deadlift. Okay? Remember, none of you are offensive linemen in the NFL. You should not have a super wide stance on your deadlift. The wider your stance is, the harder it's going to be in terms of going into the clean or the snatch as well. Because if you're used to a very wide stance, it will inhibit you from using more weight. So now that we have that position, okay, what we're going to work on next is keeping our chest up tall so that we don't hurt our back or use our back too much in this movement. It will use the back, but we want the primary movers to be your hamstrings and your glutes. So we're going to do that in two manners. One is a tight midline. We want a midline stabilization. That is involved in the forward and backwards midline and the side to side midline. You don't want to be loosey goosey. You want everything to be tight. And that's coming from your core. So your core, when we talk about squeezing your core, it's all the way around. It's a belt. You are squeezing a belt. Okay? It's tight. All the way around. You're sucking it all in. You're squeezing it as tight as you can. That will help you keep your low back stabilized. We've seen those deadlifters who lift with a rounder back. Not great. Okay? So that will help minimize that. The second thing you're going to do that's going to help minimize that even more is squeezing the shoulder blades together. So this is going to accentuate that chest up tall. At the top position, you're going to be like a superhero. Okay? Chest is out. You're ready to go. Your cape's flying behind you. Okay? That's where you're going to be. Now, that is all the things you need to do before you even touch the bar. My cucumber down. <laughs> when you go down to address the bar, take the bar, you don't need to look down. Your body will find it. You know where it is. Okay? So, whether you have a mixed grip or a double overhand grip or a hook grip, then it's up to you. You go down, my abs are squeezed tight, my feet are in position, my shoulders are back. I'm going to come all the way down. I can grab that bar off the ground, and then I'm going to come to my mid shin position. That would be your actual starting position. But because we're only using the barbell, we're not using any training plates, we're not using any bumpers, for this right now, that's what we're going to do. So I want everyone to adjust the bar, get their feet set right up on the bar. Good attempt. Okay? So your feet are on the bar, you're going to go. We're all going to squeeze our core. Midline stabilization is going to be nice and tight. Shoulders are back, chest is up, superhero pose. Everyone keeping that position, eyes staying up, go down and grab your bar. Come to mid shit. Stop right there. Your head is up, your abs are tight, the bar is against your body. From this position, you will be extending the knees. Once the knees are straight, you will stand all the way up. Extend the knees, push the knees back, and then stand up. But what we don't want to do is lose the closeness of the bar to the body. So, we're going to learn it better on the way down. When we go down with the bar, you guys can hold this for a little bit, it's not that heavy, it's only 45 pounds. When we go down with the bar, I keep the bar against my body, right? I'm pushing my hips back, I'm pushing my hips back, I'm pushing my hips back. I am now at my knees, I will then bend my knees to my bottom position. It's the exact same thing on the way up. Knees, bar close to my body, and up. Okay? Keep the bar close to your body. Heads are up, shoulders are squeezed, abs are tight, tip looking straight ahead. Okay? Bring the bar down, close to your thighs. Down, keep your legs straight, don't bend your knees until you get to your knees. Once you get to your knees, bend your knees. Bottom position, you should be right in that perfect start position. Stand back up, keep 
that bar close to your body. Feel a little bit better that time, right? Keep that bar close to your body. Every time you bring the bar away from the body, you're generating more force on the low back. You do not want that. That's why you'll see people wear deadlifting socks, okay? Because they scrape that bar real tight. They may not have great control, but you want to make sure that you keep the bar tight to the body to minimize any load on the low back, okay? So we're going to bring it back down. In that position, down. After tight, chest is tall, shoulders are still squeezed, heads up. You're at mid shin, not your knees. Lower. Right there. At tight, chest is tall. Stand it up. Bar close to your body. Beautiful. Keep your eyes up. You are looking at something at least 8 to 12 feet in front of you. You bring your eyes down, and you're going to want to roll your shoulders. Don't roll your shoulders. Chest up, abs tight. Again, down. Now when we go up, we're going to do a quick up, a forceful up, a strong up. Up! Excellent. Down slow. And it's going to be that same forceful up. Up! Abs are tight. Don't lose the abs at the top. Down. Core tight, shoulder squeeze, up! Excellent, put your powers down. So, any questions about that? Yes, Jen. Okay. So, when I, I usually do like a uh, regular double overhand. Double overhand, but so I use like heavier weights. What would be better? Is it doesn't matter that I only do it when I. Well, when you do a mixed grip, so when we're talking about mixed grip, is one hand over, one hand under. The palm that's up has more tension and more load on the bicep. So people, if they're not used to it, will get an increased likelihood of a bicep rupture or bicep tear. So if you're going to lift with that grip, I would make sure that you're switching side to side and you're doing it all the time. Don't only do it on a very heavy load. If you have very lax joints and you can lock out very easy, the likelihood of a, a bicep rupture will be tremendously less than a person who has very rigid joints and can't lock all the way up. Okay. You guys may also benefit from the hook grip. The hook grip will be done by taking the thumb and placing it inside the palm, and then here's my bar, and we're wrapping around that. At first, it's very painful. So thumb's tucked in, here's my bar with my two fingers, and wrap around that way. At first, it's painful on the thumb. However, once you get used to that grip, it is extremely powerful, and it is the strongest grip that you can utilize. It is the strongest grip. So, some people will take their thumbs up because the knurling on the bar will hurt or it just hurts from the friction and you're squeezing, okay? It's all completely normal. So, any other questions about that? List? So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the press. We're going to get to the squat in a little bit. So the press, when we execute the press, we have to get the bar to the shoulder some way, somehow. We are bypassing that step further. All we're concerned about is the bar is now on the shoulders, and we need to press the bar up. To get maximum force directed on the bar, the elbows should be pointing downward. If the elbows are pointing out, and we're in our front rack position, it's going to be really hard to elevate a large amount of weight. You also have to make sure that you have a strong, stable core. The palms, the bar, you need the thumb wraps, and the bar should be resting over the, the arm, not back on the wrist. Okay? Back on the wrist, this is a compromised position. This is not pleasant even with 45 pounds. Here, I'm a lot stronger, but you can't hold it here all day because now it's off the body. So from here, core is tight and active, I'm squeezed. I'm not going to drive with anything. This is a strict press. Head comes through, back down. I move my head around the bar, not the bar around my head. I don't rainbow out, okay? My head's here, I back it up, get through. Come back down, my head's back. I back my head up. I push up and through, my head comes through. I come back down, I'm bringing it straight down, bring my head back, and I'm through. Elbows are down, weight's more on the wrist. It will be cocked back a little bit, okay? Your foot position, should be very similar to that of your deadlift. So what I would like all of you to do 
get the bar up to your shoulders. Foot position is good. Your abs are tight, your core is active. Remember, your head moves around the bar. The bar does not move around the head. Okay? No rainbow out, no arch back. So, we're going to go 3, 2, 1, press. On the press, your head comes back, arms go up and through, head comes through. Three, two, one, press. Abs are tight. Good. Bring the bar back down. Control. It's all about control. Don't get hit. Oh. Okay? Again, strict press. No knee bend. Okay? Abs are tight. Three, two, one, press. Good. You feel a little wave-like motion in your body when you do your press. Make sure your eyes are up and your head is up. At that top position, your shoulders are still driving up. Reset. Bring the bar back down. Keep the bar close to your body as possible at all times. Once that bar comes off the body and away from the body, you're stabilizing and adding dimension of difficulty. Keep the bar as close as you can to your body. Up. Head stays up. Don't push down. Those shoulders driving up. Come back down and take a little rest. Now, when you're doing the press, there's not a lot of extremely difficult things to remember. Core stays tight. Try it with both arms. You can't use your legs. It's not a push press. It's not a push jerk. Okay? Remember, push press, just that dip drive. A push jerk is a dip drive dip. Okay? Those are different than a strict press. Don't confuse them. Depending on where you find the difficulty on your strict press, will tell you which areas of your body need a little more strengthening. So if you're on the bottom half of the movement, let's say from your shoulders to your head, and you can't get it out as much, that's more shoulders than pecs. Okay? If you can't lock it out at the top, then that's tricep strength. So, if it's shoulders and pecs, we need to be working on some more push-ups, wide grip, some type of uh, dumbbell work, bench press, things of that nature, full range of motion. If it's our triceps, we need to be working more on our dips, our ring dips, diamond push-ups, floor press, okay? Those accessory exercises will all benefit into making this better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring four bars over here onto the squat rack. So one, two, three, four. Bring your bars over onto the squat rack, ladies. And you guys are going to pair up. One person will still be by himself. They'll be my demo work. So now what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the squat. And again, just like all the other exercises, execution is key. If you have poor execution into the movement, you have a poor setup on the movement, the likelihood of being able to do the movement effectively is significantly diminished. So, our biggest rule of the squat is what? For it to count, your thighs gotta go below your knees. Okay? So, when we're doing this though, you need to have a really good setup. The bar's resting on your back. What happens with most people when they get heavy weight on their back? It's a half good morning, half squat and then they can't get back up. If your core isn't strong enough, or your core isn't set up for success from the beginning of the movement, you're not going to be able to get back up with the weight. So it's that same braced, active core with the tight shoulders. Okay? So if we achieve that position a little bit differently, everyone has a slightly different approach when going into a squat rack and how we're going to do it. I'm going to use this bar, we'll go over my position, what I like to do, and you will use your own modifications and your own different things. My first thing I'm going to do is get my hand position before I do anything else. I'm going to get my hand position on the bar, I'm going to make sure that my hands are equally distant from the center. So remember, the knurling begins at the same distance from the center, and the rings are the same distance from the center. So if I have one hand on the ring, my other hand better be on the ring. If it's not on the ring, that's not, un that's not even, that's not safe. I'm setting myself up for failure. The tighter hand position you can maintain, 
long as it's wider than shoulders, the tighter your shoulders are going to be. The tighter your shoulders are going to be, the better you're going to stay upright. Okay? So I'm going to be my hand position. When I come underneath the bar, my shoulders are squeezed and I'm ready to go. I come underneath the bar and I'm getting the bar onto the meat of my shoulders. Some people like it way up high on their neck. That's not safe. That's going to hurt. That's going to feel very poor. I am down here, across my traps. I get my feet underneath me. I'm ready to go. My shoulders are squeezed tight. I'm going to do my lift off. Stand straight up. I take one or two steps backwards. That's it. My head is up. I'm looking directly at the wall. I'm not looking down. My eyes will move when I squat, but my head will not. My abs are squeezed tight. My feet are in their position. I have a slight turnout of my toes. My abs are nice and tight. I'm going to go down, chest up tall, as best that I can. I'm tight abs at the bottom here. All the way back up. When I make my ascent back up, my eyes will travel up with me. I go down, deep breath in. Up. Okay? When I go down from the bar and I'm done, my set's over. I walk back into the rack and then I come down. I do not step forward uh, and, and mix on one side and I need my spot to help me out on the other. Okay? Walk into the rack, that's what it's there for, come back down. Now, if you have shoulder injuries, you may not be able to get your arms in as tight, but that's okay. If you have any other injuries, and maybe you can't go down all the way because your body doesn't move that way. That's okay. You do the best that you can. Okay? This movement is fantastic for strengthening your core muscles. This movement is going to be a lot better than laying on the ground with a thousand crunches if you have a heavy enough load. So what I would like, I'd like two ladies here, you two ladies here. You guys are going to go through, you're going to do your setup first. You're going to be ready to go. You got this car here. Yeah. So, get your, remember, my setup is for me. It doesn't mean it has to be for you. It can be slightly different. You can get under the bar and bring your hands in tight. That's up to you. The things I want to see before you lift off is that your head is looking straight ahead, your core is tight and active, you have both feet under the bar lifting the bar up. Because if you can get it out on one foot like this, you should be using a lot more weight. Okay? So. Get yourselves up under the bar, ready to go. No one lifts it off yet. Now, we want to make sure that bar is across the meat, the traps. Squeeze these shoulders in nice and tight. Chest is up, head is up. We're good there. We've got all this air here. Can we get this out of the way? Get this out of the way? Good. Okay, come back down. Come up a little more. Right there. Push your butt out. Jack, you're good. All right, ladies, let's stand up with our bars. Step backwards. Drive your elbows down, not back. Abs are tight, chest are up, nice and tall. Squat down nice and low, weight in your heels. Squat down, abs are tight, and up. We're gonna do three more, down. Get a little lower, Kristen. Up, down, up. Last one, down. Now, let's put the bar back. Stand up, walk into the rack. Look at how much safer that is. Okay? Much safer. So, my three people who did not go yet, please get on the bar. Quickly. So, get yourself ready. Get underneath the bar. Abs are tight, both feet are under the bar. Ready to go. Squeeze it nice and tight, stand it up, step back, chest is up, head is up, abs are tight, squat down nice and low, and up, down, up, down, abs are tight, knees are up, chest is up, up, down, stand it up, walk forward and rest. Not that we're going to pick on Tim, but we're going to pick on Tim. Tim has some slight mechanical faults in his squat. He knows this. He works on it. But he doesn't work on it as much as he maybe should, and that's okay. 
But what I want you guys all to do is I want you to come around to the side over here so that we can all see what Tim does. And this is what I expect from you guys when you're working with each other. If you see certain small things happening, how do we address them? What corrections do we make? What do we use? So Tim's going to get on his bar. He's going to get himself ready to go. So hopefully he doesn't turn into a super squatter and get rid of all his issues right now. So Tim, go ahead. Get yourself ready. Abs are tight. Go down. And up. So watch his feet. Down. And up. Let's watch those feet again. We're going to do two more. Down. And up. One more. Down. And up. So it's gotten better. Grab the bar. It's gotten better every time you squat it down. But what was happening is, number one, his left foot was moving a lot. It would rotate out, rotate in, rotate out, rotate in, which meant his heel was coming off the ground, which means he wasn't using his glutes and hamstrings on that side. So he's firing a lot out of his quad. He's going to put a lot more torque and pain on his knee, and he's putting a lot more pressure through his right leg. So he's going to be super strong on his right leg, and then when we go and do pistols, guess what? Tim's not very good at his left leg on his pistols. So, why is this happening? What is causing Tim to come forward onto his toes, really on both sides, just more pronounced on the left? Most of the time, tight adductors. Tight adductors are going to inhibit the hip flexors, they're going to create some issues. It's not usually, oh, your glutes and hamstrings are too tight. It's more so those adductors. So we'll just do a quick, a quick fix. Not a solution, but a quick fix to Tim's issue. Tim's going to take a real wide stance on the squat. We're going to see what happens with that. So go a little wider. Turn those toes out of touch. Squat down. Head up. Down. Head up. Down. Head up. Down. And up. Rapid. Right. How did that look? Better work than the same. Look better. So what did we do there? We were basically eliminating those hip flexors and the adductors out of the situation by turning his feet out and allowing him to be in this already pre-stretched position. Okay? Now, if we were to take him in narrower, it's going to get worse. So go ahead. Let's go narrower. Narrow. More. Go ahead. You don't have to exaggerate it. Just do your normal squat. See, he, he can't stay down. He wants to stay down. He would love to stay down. Okay? So, it might seem counterintuitive because if you're thinking about your adductors, they stretch out this way. And when we put him out here, it's stretching him out. But really what's happening is we're just allowing his pelvis to sink down easier. If I was to put Tim into a frog stretch, Tim, let's have you go into a frog stretch. So we put Tim into this frog stretch. He's going to hang out there. Make sure your heels are right behind your knees. Both of them. Left foot out more. Okay? And he's going to hang out here for a little bit. So now we're going to stretch out those adductors. Okay? We're going to stretch them out. 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 We're going to have him hold this for about 30 seconds. This is going to allow his adductors to relax more and will allow his hips to sink down even more. We'll put him back in his normal squat stance and we should see moderate improvement. He doesn't mean it'll go away. What does this happen from? Every activity of daily living, how you sit, how you drive, what you do, um, you know, he might also have some issues with hip mechanics. His hips may just be tight in general. His hip flexors are tight, we know that, okay? The widening of the knees really allows the hip flexors to relax easier. So Tim, let's have you come up and out of that frog stretch. Get back up on that squat rack. Good thing you didn't work out right now. So get your normal squat stance. Head up, squat down. Better. Normal squat stance. All we did was that adductor stretch. Okay, come back. So when we see someone rock forward up to their toes, that's one possible reason. Another major reason people rock forward up to their toes, and I'll demo this one because none of you guys do it because you squat too good, is that they're afraid. Right? You got a bar on your back. Never did this before. I'm not confident. I'm afraid. So, 
They do one of these. They don't push their butt out. Their butt stays tucked underneath of them. You tell them to sit down, and they do one of these, right? Little Michael Jackson move. And then they come down, and then they get up, and they wobble it. They're all over the place. So that's fear. That's not mechanics. That's fear. Well, how do we coach through the fear? Very simple. Put something behind them they can sit on, okay? That is at an appropriate height. Guide them back and spot them accordingly. When you are spotting someone in their spot, if there's only one person spotting, uh, we'll show you what to do. So, Jen, let's say you get on the spot. Right? So we're a solo spot, right? Get yourself off. Stand up. She's ready. My hands are going to come underneath here. My palms are facing each other or up. Okay? She's going to squat down. I'm going to be right behind her. I'm not touching her. And then up. And then back up. Okay? Not. Go ahead, squat. That looks good. Nice job. Excellent. Not just standing off to the side or. Keep going, Jeff. Keep squatting. So how's it going? That's not spotting. Okay? So, Jen, you're going to stay here for a second while we get another spotter in. So, we're going to have two spotters now. Kristen, you're going to be my spotter over here. I'm going to be the spotter over here. I'm just going to show you guys what we want you to do. Fingers are together, right? And we keep our arms down. Jen's going to squat down. Uh, Jen is a guy. Kristen, going to grab the bar. Jen, come up. We come up together. Or, Jen, come up, squat down. Jen doesn't have it. Jen, fall forward. Oh, we got the bar. Okay? Jen, go ahead and get out of the way. Without hitting yourself. Okay? That's how we're going to spot properly with two people. Now, we'd probably end up putting the bar down if I mean, how it was, but we're going to bring that bar right back up on here. So, when you're spotting, two people, it's one on each side. One person, right behind them. Make sure you spot the smart way. Okay? No one wants to get hurt doing any of this stuff. Now, a couple other things that we see people do when they're squatting. How many times do I tell you guys, knees out? You guys squat like this, right? You drive those knees in. When you drive your knees in, it makes you want to come onto your toes. Back. We had a lot more pain and stress on the knee then. We have to use our quads. We are not using our glutes and our hamstrings. So when you guys come down, drive those knees out in that squat position, and then keep them out and up. And when you go to stand up, it's like, man, boom. Glutes and hamstrings are being used. That's why we want you guys to drive those knees out. Okay? So, let's all get our bars back and get out there. We're going to go over the clean. You guys are so quiet. Any questions so far? Commentary? Anything? Now the clean is another one of those movements where we have to coach through fear. It's a lot of fear. Deadlift is easy. Stand up. Hold on to something and stand up. That's real easy to coach. You can make anyone a super awesome deadlifter because it's very simple in terms of stand up. The squat, there's fear involved. The clean, damn straight there's fear involved. And that's okay. But don't let the fear control you. Okay? Master the movement. So the clean does involve a deadlift. It involves a high hold. It involves a front squat. We're throwing them all together in one fluid movement. Okay? So your position to start is the deadlift position. Now, when you do your deadlift from the floor, from here to here, you can move at normal speed. From here to here, we have little speed strips, right? Little Nintendo, Super Nintendo, okay, you get speed strip, you zoom it. From here it's fast, right? So from the deadlift position, from here, up is normal. It could be fast, but we don't want you to cheat and use momentum. We want you to really use your hips to drive this weight up. From here to here, it's that fast acceleration, and at the very top, I'm getting my triple extension in my ankle, my knee, and my hip. Okay, so in slow motion, it'd be here, I'm driving up, 
Shrug, pull. Shrug, pull. Okay? As we move through it faster, people like to lose the shrug, and then they start losing the pull because they get confused, they get tired, they get put out. Okay? The higher the shrug and the pull, the less you have to drop underneath of it. The heavier the weight, the more you have to drop underneath of it. It would be in your best interest to drop low from the beginning. Make a better habit of it, and you're going to get better at it. If you always do your really nice wide X jump, and you don't sink low, you're not going to get up anywhere near the jump poundage you should be getting up. Start with that tight stance. Your drop is not much wider. Okay? All you gotta be able to do is drop the hips down. Now, when you're dropping underneath the bar, what you're trying to do is get under the bar faster than gravity brings it down. You're catching it on your body. You're not holding it in your hands. You catch it in a front rack position. So what we're talking about here, put it all together, look at the movement, okay? And by no means is mine perfect. I'm continuously working on this, as you all should be. You think you do something perfect? I'm sure there's someone doing it better than you somewhere else. Okay? Everyone needs practice on everything. Because if you don't practice it, you're gonna lose that skill. All skill. Okay? So I'm gonna get my bar. I'm here, right? I'm gonna do my shrug, my high pull, all that good stuff. Triple extension, and I'm gonna drop catch. And then up. Again, making sure I get my hips extended. I don't think I got them extended very good on that one. Okay? That's what we're looking for. People like to do this. My feet are super wide. Super wide. I can stand it up. And then that would be a good lift. Or, people like to do these. Drive their feet forward. Last one, people don't like to get their elbows up. And they'll do this. And then they got it here. Like, I don't know what to do. Or I can't do it, it's too heavy. So, all three of those things are happening because of fear. We jump our feet wider because we're afraid to drop our hips down. Okay, that's fine, that's normal. We drive our knees forward for the same reason, we don't want to drop back. We catch it here because we're not confident in getting our elbows up and catching it on our body. It's all fear that's preventing people. It's not skill, it's not athleticism, it's not the ability. It's just the fear. So, what we're gonna do? Everyone's gonna get on the car, deadlift position, narrow foot stance. You're gonna pick your bar up, come to just above your knees. This will be a slightly more comfortable position. We'll actually just have you guys stand all the way up for right now. So what we're going to do, you're gonna gun the mid shit, from mid shin, you will give me the triple extension, high pull pause. Right at the top, okay? That's what we're looking for. That's what we're gonna stop for right now. We're gonna just do the triple extension, high pull pause. Three, come down. Three, two, one, go. And come back down. Don't hold it at the top. I don't care about the hold at the top. I want maybe a half second pause and then drive it back up. Two, one, up. Down. Guys, when you do this, explode as fast as you can. You want a really strong, fast movement here. Okay, down. Reset, good. Two, one, explode. Keep the elbows above the wrist and don't keep your feet. You want to snap up, guys. You want to be fast. You want to explode up that bar. Reset, down. Three, two, one, up. Good. Snap those hips. Drive the bar up with the hips. Don't forget the shrug. Three, two, one, up. Better. Reset. Three, two, one, up. Reset. Three, two, one, up. Reset. Three, two, one, up. Don't let those wrists bend. Keep those arms. Keep those wrists straight at the very top, so you may not get it up as high. Okay. So let's put that bar down real quick. Everyone's in their deadlift position. 
fake power. No PVC pipe, just that fake power. Get down on your deadlift. Get down on your deadlift, Tim. Okay? Deadlift only. Up! Deadlift only. Deadlift only. Good. Back down. Reset. Deadlift only. Up! Fast, guys. Fast. Down. It's only deadlift. Snap it up. Up! Reset. Deadlift. Up! Excellent. Now, standing in that deadlift, I want to shrug high pull. Shrug high pull. Okay? In the deadlift position. Ready? Go! Shrug high pull. Shrug high pull. Okay? Reset. Reset. Deadlift position. Down. Deadlift shrug high pull. Up! Good. Reset. Up! Excellent. Now we got it. Now that looks a lot better. Now let's just do it with the bar. Okay? Pick up your bar. Come to your mid shin deadlift position. Drop it down. Abs tight, push it on, nice and strong. Up! Yes! Keep those elbows up, Lukowski. Down! Reset! Up! Beautiful! Two more. Down! Up! Excellent! One more. Up! Good! Reset! Now, not that any of you have uh, an issue cleaning this amount of weight, but you all brought it up in a standing position to your nose. So every single one of you will have no issue cleaning this weight. But here's the thing. I want you to squat clean the weight. I want you to drop your butt all the way down. I don't want you to catch it here and then squat down. I want you to catch it in that bottom of the squat. Okay? So you gotta trust yourself. So what we're going to do before we pick up the bar, because it'll be hard, I think, for you guys to do this with the bar, I want you right here, high pole position. What's gonna happen? We're gonna do drop catch. Elbows, right? And then stand. Reset, bring your feet in a little tighter, and it's gonna be that drop catch. You can be up on your toes because you'll be in that high pole position. So you can be up on your toes, drop catch, and then stand back up. And then we'll wiggle the feet back in, okay? So, up on your toes, high pole position. And drop catch! You guys gotta be faster. Up, remember, you are trying to get down under the bar faster than gravity is pulling the bar down to the ground. You have to be faster than gravity. So it's not just a drop down, it's a drive down. Okay? High pull pause. Drop catch! Better. Keep your elbows up. Reset. Faster, guys. Watch as fast as you can down. High pull pause. Drop catch! Excellent. That was a lot better. Reset. Up. Reset. High pull pause. Drop catch. Getting better. Up. Even faster, guys. High pull pause. This is where you're going to get more weight up. Reset down. Up. Reset. High pull pause. Drop catch. Up. High pull pause. Drop catch. Okay. So now what we're going to do, put it all together with the pop. May not look very pretty at first, but that's okay. Do the best that you can. Just practice. Raise the groove. Develop the motor pad. Okay? So everyone's going to stand up the bar, have it come up to their hips. And then we're going to go down to the mid chin, and then we're going to go from there. You will all pause at the bottom and hang out until I ask you to stand up. So at the very bottom of that catch, okay, and that's where you're going to hang out. So come down mid chin, it's going to be a full clean. Go! And up. Reset. Bottom of the deadlift.
guys are lucky if you do it once or twice a week. So don't be upset if you're not very good at it. If you want to get better at it, you need to do it more often. Okay? You need to do all of these movements more often. We, that's why we cycle through them pretty much every week. Sometimes twice or three times in a week. These are fantastic movements. If you're not good at a lightweight, how do you expect to be good at heavyweight? Okay? So, again, perfect practice makes perfect. So when we are doing things with PVC pipe, and not the barbells even, treat it just like it's a barbell. The better you do there, the better it translates into everything else. You want to be faster, you want to jump higher, you want to lift more weight, get good at these things. Squat, down the press, clean. You get good at those, everything else you do here will get better. If you want to muscle up, get better at these things. It will all translate. You getting better at all of these things is just going to continue to permeate into every other aspect of the fitness that we do here. Okay? Any questions? So, not as long as a seminar as some of the other fast, that's okay. There was a lot of hands on, there was a lot of working on stuff. You guys can do whatever you want for the next 15 minutes. Um, I, all that I ask is that you put the bars back when you're done with them. If you have any questions or you want to go over something, I'll be more than happy to answer any of those questions. Alright? Excellent job today, guys. <laughs>